Before we get started, please consider smashing that like button and subscribing if you enjoy our content. Don't forget to hit the bell to turn on notifications for future updates. What's up, Darkalicious? My name is Lydia. Yeah, I'm Kenny G. And today we're going to be... Yeah, we're going to be talking about Death Stranding. Uh, where, do, where is it? Right here. Special edition Death Stranding. The metal case. The metal... The metal edition, yes. Um, so yeah, we've played through the first eight hours of the game, and from what I understand, it's a uh, it's a fifty hour game. But uh, we want to oh, tell wait. you before <laughs> we get into anything that we're probably going to mention spoilers yes. of the initial eight hours. We've only yes. played eight hours, so that's all we know so far. Mm. Um, yeah. So if you haven't played it yet. Maybe uh, come back to the come back later, or if you just don't care, or you've played it already, then let's chat, right? So, uh, yeah, what's your initial impression of the game, Lydia? I want to gouge my eyes out. I want to gouge my eyes out. <laughs> oh my god, it's so boring. It's uh, it's that's really me. that's me personally. Bad. Like, I know, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it's just like, oh, my God. And then, like, it, it, what did it's I... hard to navigate. It's... The navigation is not too bad, but it's infuriating. I would no say it's romance. very... It's romance. It's your sister. It's like, I, it doesn't give me anything to yeah. do. Have you noticed that with a lot of things recently, that they're straying away from the romance formula and going yeah, more with the brother sister or two sisters yeah or, yeah you know, that type formula yeah. yeah that's the new thing but anyways uh before we get into uh too many uh venomous words about the initial eight hours i just want to show you for all the people who you know will hate on us for disliking kojima of late all of the Kojima love we have. Okay, we're gonna all, flex on you. Wait okay. for this. Okay, there you go. Snatcher, Sega Saturn. Okay. Snatcher, Sega CD. This game alone is worth like three hundred, four hundred dollars, maybe more even. I don't know. Uh, Police knots. Uh, this one is Sega Saturn, I believe. Flex. Um, Phantom Pain. Ooh. Nobody cares about that game, though. No. And then here's Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3. Uh, oh, I forgot to grab limited edition of 4. It's over there, but who cares? You I also have... Point. We're big. Kojima fans big. is basically what I'm trying to establish here. Yes. We have every Kojima game with the exception of the Penguin game he made, which was his very first game he ever made for the... Uh, I think it was the MSX. That's the first ever game. Yeah. Wow. Um, but besides that, we have literally every game he's ever made. And, uh, yeah. So we're fans. We're big fans of Kojima. Had we not have been fans, we would have left this game sooner. But we yes. played eight hours. In one, one sitting. In one sitting. Just because we're like, we need to give this a shot. Uh, we need to give it a go. And you yeah. know what? It, in a lot of ways, is... Very similar to this one. Metal Gear Solid 5? Metal Gear 5, Phantom Pain, and Death Stranding are very, very similar in the sense that they're both open world games with nothing to do in the open world. Yes. So you have, um, you know, cities, much like in Metal Gear 5, you have um, bases, and then huge areas to traverse between them with nothing there at all. Nothing, right? The odd time you'll run into BTs, which are like these ghosts. Yeah, which right? are very annoying. Which are actually annoying. They're not fun to combat or navigate away from. And- uh, Wait, wait, by combat, do you mean throwing my feces at them? Yes, I do. Ah, why? Ah, yes. what, we're not given a gun throughout this entire Yeah, we're eight game. hours into the game. And there are no weapons. And at this point, I am under the impression that we will never receive a, a real gun, right? The only weapons we have is our sweat, our blood. And our poo. And our poo. And our pee. Yes. Yes, so. Yes, yes. that's literally it. And you throw it at the enemy. You throw it at the 
like at the ghost. Can't even make this up. The only thing, okay, the only thing is you can fist fight with the um humans. the mules that you yeah. encounter, which are mules are humans that are like addicted to delivering. Which sounds ridiculous weird. in its own. I'm sure they wouldn't like your pee in their face either. No, but well, it, we haven't tried. We haven't tried I suppose, it yet. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, it's, here's 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 basically what it is. You traverse from place to place. They spout expo expository dialogue at you. Then you traverse to the next place. Yeah. And nothing kind of happens in between. No. Right. And it gets really boring and tedious. Yeah. So, and, and very similar to Metal Gear Five again, the opening mission is fantastic it engages you yeah. so much and oh, you're like yeah. holy shit this is so cool yes. like the first 45 minutes of the game we were like oh my god this is amazing yeah and then it's just like you're now in the open world and there is nothing to do there's nothing to yeah. do walk like half an hour that way and nothing's gonna happen except for you're gonna keep tripping over stones uh, yeah. Once in a blue moon, you'll find a rope or a ladder that someone else has put down. Yeah. And then you'll walk some more. And then yeah. you'll fall some more and trip some more. Yeah. And maybe you'll fall in the water and drop a package and you have to swim and get yeah. it. Um, or you run into the DTs and then they damage your package. Yeah. And then you have to go back. All the way back. So your original this was a, uh, yeah. So at some point we finally got a motorcycle probably five, six hours into the game. And then it became a little better. Just a little bit. Just a smidgen better. Because at least we could uh, expediate our traversal of the area. Right. 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 But it was still met with a lot of tedious nonsense where your motorcycle uh, degrades when it starts raining. Mm -hmm. Or if you drive it too much. Or if you drive it too much. And you have an alternator on your bike, but apparently... Science doesn't work in this game. Yes, uh, apparently he, he didn't look into how alternators work, right? So you have a bike, and they literally say you have an alternator. They call it a different name, but it's basically, it's an alternator, right? An alternator charges a battery as the engine runs, right? Right. Uh, but for some reason, you can run out of electrical power. So you have to keep going to all these places and recharging your your bike, which is really annoying, yeah. right? It's like, it's like anyone who is like, you know what will be a cool element in our open world game where we have nothing to do? Gassing up your vehicle. No, yeah. I mean, have you ever played Grand Theft Auto? Have you ever played Red Dead Redemption? These are massively popular open world games and they never are like yo you need to stop and get some gas or your horse is tired you better take a break yeah right it's like no you because even though that is realistic it affects the fun factor yes right yeah. and games are supposed to be fun right which brings me to the thing we discussed earlier mm. which was at some point maybe after metal gear 3 Kojima started down this train of yeah. making games for Kojima, not making games for fun and for the customer, the consumer. right? Yeah. So, so this game is literally Kojima's circle jerk of Hollywood friends. Of Hollywood friends, who, um, you know, they're all in the game. Whatever they do a good job acting, voice acting, all that jazz. Uh, the motion I, capture's great. The like, motion capture is great. great, and the cinematic feel of the game is fantastic. Mm. But those moments are sparse, yeah. right? Yeah. And the game is guilty of another thing I hate in video games, which is giving you a lot of information stuffed in menus that you have to dig through to learn about the world. So yeah. rather than telling me, you know what this is what happened this, this is, is what this means it's this like, is what this means it's like hey you should dig down three tiers of menus and read this special diary yeah that someone like, else wrote that we didn't get voice acted i don't know why they don't get that voice acted money that's why well special no but those diaries are written by the characters that are in the game 
right? Like one is written by Dead Man, one is written by the other dude who dies every 21 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. And one is written by uh, the guy with the skull mask, right? But uh, it's just painful, yeah. right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna give you an example of a part of the game that I found incredibly frustrating. We got, we finally got our motorcycle. Then there was this mission where you had to go to a port, yeah. right? We had to go to this like port, like this harbor town, right? And so we, uh, in order to do that, for whatever reason, they're like, before you do that, come all the way back home, Ooh, right? Yes, yes. Which is like an hour maybe of walking to get back home. Mm -hmm. But luckily for us, we had the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. But what happens? We get on the motorcycle, we charge it up with the electrical. You have to build these generators. Mm -hmm. It's all 3D printed stuff and you 3D print basically. They call it chiral, chi what is it called? Chiral, chiralium or something. And they do some kind of 3D print, right? Mm -hmm. And then it be, turns into a, an electrical generator. And this boosts, basically it gives an electrical boost to your motorcycle. Because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, the battery is dead. You need to give it a boost. Because the alternators don't work in this world. Yes. So you boost it. You drive your motorcycle back. It takes you like 15 minutes, right? You get there. You, you get all the way back. You pick up your packages you have to deliver. You come all the way back. You get like halfway. You encounter BTs. They damage your packages, and then you, they, in my case, right? Maybe if you n knew exactly what to do on your very first playthrough, yeah, uh, it wouldn't happen. But for us, we encountered BTs, they attacked us, we lost some of our packages, but we didn't die, we just lost some of the packages. Because when they come out of the ground, they're grabbing you. And you're on your motorcycle. And, and they damage yeah. your bike, yeah. and then they damage the packages. So luckily we evaded them, the BTs went away, then we got back on the bike, had to traverse all the way back to the home city again for the second time. Then uh, we spent like 30, 40 minutes trying to figure out how the frig do we get our cargo, Yeah, right? it says we won't let you proceed to the next chapter without you having all your cargo. Yeah, and it's like, you only have one of the four packages you need to deliver. Oh. We're like, where do you get the other packages? I'm like, I'm at the terminal that gives you the packages. Like, our packages had been destroyed. At yeah, point. they were destroyed. And we're like, how do you get the packages again once they've been destroyed? Oh, my eyes twitching. <laughs> oh my God. Right? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll include some footage. I'll, I'll probably, like, overlay some footage or something, but... Um, yeah, we literally spent like half an hour trying to figure it out until we're just like, all right, let's look on the internet and yeah. figure it out. And, and that should never be the case. That takes you out of the game. It sucks. And that should never be the case that you need to go and Google how to do something simple like retrieve the packages you need to deliver. But for whatever reason, that's what Kojima decided he wanted. He... he he, he buried it like four menu tiers down how to get the packages again. So essentially you had to go cancel the order, then you had to re reissue the order. the order, pick up the things, pack load, them it, load it back on your bike. Then, uh, because at that point we were like, oh shit, we need to repair our bike because yeah. it was damaged. So we, then we put the bike into the garage to have it repaired. And then when it came out of the repair bay, the packages are gone again. So then we had to load the, we had to go, then There's we had to figure out another thing, which was the packages when you put your bike in the garage uh, and it comes out of the garage fixed, your packages are shoved into your private storage locker. But at no point is it told to you that's yeah. where they are. Yeah. So you have to again go on the internet or figure it out through dumb luck and clicking through the menus. Yep. That that's where your packages are. So then we have to go in the private locker, then load all the packages, then get on the bike, then... Oh, but if you load the packages and you're not on your bike, then it tells you that you don't have all your packages. Yes, so it's like, you don't have all your packages. And I'm like, where what do you mean? Now? We just loaded the packages. How do we not have the packages? Then we mount the bike, and then it's like, you have all your packages. And it's like, no, I'm standing two feet from my bike. Yeah. And you're telling me I don't have the packages. Yeah. It's like, how did you miss such an obvious issue 
right? Did you not do play testing with people? Like, this is really obvious, simple stuff, mm -hmm. right? That, that that is like um, tedious, right? It's tedious stuff yeah. that takes you out of the fun of the game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and like, then we we get back on our bike finally, and we start traversing all the way back again. Right? All the way back to try to get to the port city. Mm -hmm. Then we're like halfway and we get attacked by BTs again. And this time there's more of them. There's like three? No, there was two initially, but then more of them started to chase us, right? So then uh, we, we got away from the first group and uh, we were like, okay, thank God. Then we traversed like an extra kilometer maybe and then we encountered another group which caused us to have to go up into these mountains that were very uh, rocky rocky and hard to traverse in your bike yes and then we get jammed between a bunch of rocks and we have to reverse and forward reverse forward and reverse that's forward. your bike every time and, you and, drive and then it. sparks are coming off your bike and you're yeah. just like are you kidding me like is this for real? This isn't fun. Like, no. there's nothing fun about, hey, let me freaking back up my bike. Yeah. Right? It's not fun. There's nothing fun about that. Yeah. Like, then finally, uh, they caught us. They caught us. And then finally, the first fun thing in the entire freaking game happened, mm. which was uh, a giant whale emerging from the oil chasing us through uh, the mountains, right? Yeah. And that only happened because we got caught. Yes. So it shows that if you are a good player, which I guess we were, because we hadn't actually been captured by them yet. Yeah. Until that moment. Yeah. That uh, when you finally got caught, that's when an exciting action sequence happened. And we had to yeah. start running through the mountains and this whale is jumping mm. out of the oil trying to snatch you. And you can see the green grass in the distance and he can't uh, get out of the grass section. Yeah. You know, he can't get out of the oil, yeah, yeah. right? So you're running, trying to get to the grass and he's leaping out of the oil trying to like eat you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you're just like, holy shit, this is insane, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally we lost him and then we had to go then as soon as you get out of the oil it's just like ooh, everything calms down like nothing happened like nothing happened at all yeah. then you have to go all the way back to where your bike is get on your bike no reload all the packages on your bike again yes, because for some reason for some reason the whale decided in uh <laughs> to unload all the packages and put them beside the bike not just so conscious it's very nice of him wow. uh, i would i i honestly thought the packages were going to just be destroyed yeah. i was yeah. about to lose my shit Again. Yeah. Uh, but he just kindly took them off the bike and put them beside the bike. What a nice, nice whale. Nice octopus. evil whale octopus monster thing. Mm -hmm. So then we got on the bike again. Then finally we start driving into the port town. This beautiful music plays and you're like, this is so Everything's awesome. Everything's green and no rocks. Like, oh. And you're like, okay, this is a very cinematic feeling moment where yeah. you're cruising your bike down this huge hill after your encounter with the whale. And you're like, that was so cool, right? Mm -hmm. Then um, then what happens? Then, then we delivered the packages finally. Yeah. Then uh, we tell this guy that we were with his brother when his brother died, and he basically doesn't react at all. Yes, yeah, He's weird. like, my brother died? Huh. Uh, and then yeah. he sends you an email about it later. Yeah, it's like, But um, it's like, you couldn't have, like, acted emoted. out that scene or have him emote. It's just like, my brother died, huh. Mm. I'll send you an email about it later. Look at my keychain. It's yeah. like, yeah. what the hell Look at my keychain. <laughs> yes. What so that they could play that cutscene later where Mads Mikkelsen has the same keychain, right? Who knows? Um, I don't know. No, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So anyways, then that scene plays out. Then we leave the port town, or we begin to leave the port town, and then another exciting sequence happens, which is uh, the main villain the that octopus. we know of. The octopus whale is back. Yeah, well, there, there's the dude who's played by Troy Baker. Yeah. Um, shows up, and he, like, kind of teases you a bit. And then he summons the whale, and this time you have to fight the whale. Now, if we had been screwing up multiple times throughout the game, we would have been like, oh, shit, it's that whale. But this was literally the second time we ever seen the whale, right? Yeah. Because we had been playing okay-ish. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we have to fight the whale by throwing our 
poo and pee and blood, and blood and at sweat. the whale. And sweat yeah. at the whale. And then we killed it, and then that's where we stopped for the day. But yeah. it was just so that ridiculous. That was eight hours. That was eight and a half hours. Then we when we reached that point. And it was just like, okay, so there were some cool moments in the game, but it took us eight hours to get there. Yeah. And like Lydia said at the start of this video, we are hardcore Kojima fans. Like, I didn't even show you half of our Metal Gear collection. These are just the games. I have the figures, I have the art books, I yeah. have the, uh, like, everything. The Sound wall scrolls, tracks, yeah. the soundtracks. There's stuff everywhere. Metal Gear and Snatcher. But, like, um... Yeah, if we weren't hardcore Kojima fans, we would not have hung in there for eight hours no. to get to that awesome point of the game where yeah. you're like, okay, this is actually kind of cool, mm. right? Mm. But but there was literally eight hours of tedium. There was points where I was literally furious. Like rage quit. Rage like quit eminent. furious. Yeah. What was that point? Was it when the bike was... Was it when the bike was sparking and it was about to explode? The bike was sparking. We lost some stuff. We didn't know how to get it back. It was just, ugh. Oh, just all oh my it, Yeah, because also the bike deteriorates really quickly. In the rain. In the rain. And it's raining all the time. Like, it literally so starts your raining. Packages. What? Your packages deteriorate. Your, your, your packages deteriorate, but you can at least repair them. Yeah. But you can't repair the bike. Only a shop can rep repair the bike. So our bike deteriorated because we were stuck in the rain and the BTs would not get out of the way. Yeah. So we're like, frick, we're stuck in the rain for like 15 minutes trying to get around these BTs and the bike's just getting more and more deteriorated and there's literally nothing we can do about it because you can't ride the bike up like vertical inclines, no. right? So yeah. it's like either we ditch the bike or we have to wait them out, right? Or we wait till there's an opening where we can blaze past them. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't always work because we tried to blaze past them once and they caught us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and they weren't even close to us, right? Mm -hmm. They just made like this magical goo and our bike starts sinking into the goo, right? Yes. yes. But it's just like, oh my God, it was so, it was so infuriating. Yeah. Right? To yeah. get to that point of excitement took many, many hours. Yeah. And then uh, there's uh, rumors who are like, okay, at 10 hours, you'll be having like a great time at this game. But 10 hours is a long time for someone to invest in something. You know? Like, that, come on. Yes. It's too much. There are some cool elements to the game. Even the initial one or two deliveries we had to do, I thought, well, you know what? This is a little tedious, but... It's kind of cool that we're traversing this open world um, until you start thinking about it a little more and you're like, where are the roads? Yeah. Where are the streets? There are no roads anywhere. Maybe maybe we're gonna encounter them in the next coming chapters of the game, but uh, we're literally outside like a capital city and there are no roads anywhere. It's just grass fields. Yeah. Now, even if you were to say the apocalypse happened, right? Which did in which it did in this game the roads would still be there maybe vines and grass would grow through all the cracks and the concrete and mm -hmm. stuff over time but uh they would still be there the yeah. stone right or tar mm. or whatever they wouldn't just be completely gone right it seems strange so literally there's nowhere in the game we've encountered where there are smooth roads except for inside the cities. Yeah. As soon as you exit the city within five meters of exiting the city, you're off-roading. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's frustrating because every like two feet you hit a rock and then you navigate this one, you hit a rock, and you hit yeah. this, you hit a rock, and you hit a rock, and you hit, and you have to keep doing wheelies to get over the ro yeah. rocks, right? And you have to like rock back the toggles to do the wheelie to get over the rocks. And then the baby gets mad. And then you... the baby gets mad. And so you have to rock the baby. Aww. And you're when you see that mechanic in the trailers, you're like, oh, that's an interesting mechanic. You have to rock the baby. Except for when the baby's getting mad every like 30 freaking seconds. Yeah. And you have to be like, rock the baby, rock the baby, yeah. rock the baby. And you're like, Fah! <laughs> right? So anyways, yeah. um, let's just wrap it up. I'm sure everyone's already checked out. Any, any like hardcore kojima fans yeah okay let us know in the comments below what you think if you like what you see please hit the subscribe button give us a like or a share uh likes are very important to our channel because it gives our tiny channel exposure and we need your help so please yes. like our stuff yes if you uh, we us are streaming the mm. entire adventure on twitch 
So if you want to follow us over there, you can uh, tag along. Hopefully, we've got through the most tedious part of the game. Yes. Um, I hope. I Fingers hope. Crossed. If you want to follow us on Twitter, our handle is YouAreDorkalicious. And watch us stream live weekly on Twitch. Our handle is Super underscore Dorkalicious. And we'll see you next time. It's been Lydia. Kenny G. And it's been fun dorking out with you. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, this is Lydia. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a couple likes and a share. The likes are super important because every time you like, it gives our uh, channel a bit more exposure. So please like. If you don't want to follow, at least like. Please, please, please. Also, um, if you want to chat, please leave a comment uh, down below. Also, if you want to chat more frequently, we are on Twitch. Uh, the channel is called Super underscore Dorkalicious, and we stream pretty much daily, and uh, we'll stream like video games karaoke fun stuff so just uh pop on over to twitch super underscore dorkalicious and definitely engage with us so um but for now please like and share and subscribe and uh we'll see you next time